he was just doing a punction here and doing a punction there and doing a punction here. And he say, he very spontaneously said, the doctor killed him with an injection. It was in favor of this family who was suffering, and also, in my opinion, for the patient, but not because the patient asked me. It is accomplished, said Christ on the cross. It is accomplished, said Dutch Health Minister Els Borst when signing the Euthanasia Act. And so the Netherlands became the first European country to legalize this process. Even though euthanasia had been carried out in the Netherlands illegally for decades whilst the government turned a blind eye. I did my first euthanasia in 1969. 1969, so that's, that's more than 30 years ago. And I, I, I talked about that from the beginning. So therefore, they say I, I'm a little bit the godfather of euthanasia. What is euthanasia? Euthanasia is actually an act by a person who uh, terminates the life of another person on the specific request of that person. Two uh, procedures. One is the, uh, the physician-assisted suicide. That uh, you give the patient a drink with uh, uh, drugs in it, medicines uh, in it, and the patient drinks it and uh, falls asleep in uh, five to ten minutes, and then uh, you wait uh, till the patient uh, is uh, dead. The other procedure is uh, that you give an injection to the patient and that's a uh, procedure where it's going very fast. More and more doctors realize that giving an injection, dying the patient within five minutes, it was all over. He could leave there for a moment with the, with the family and then go on with his normal work. I was there because I wanted to find out what I could do for this, this person and this family. And it was the first time that I saw the patient. So I've been sitting down there and I was watching that doctor. And he was just doing a punction here and doing a punction there and doing a punction here and doing a punction there. And it took about three quarters of, of, of an hour. And in the meantime, the distress was going up and up and up and up and everyone's in complete distress. And I thought, no, now I'm sitting here and I'm watching the whole scene. And I think there is no other way out in euthanasia because they ha all have decided that. And I don't get any time to, to do anything about it, to help. So then I've put one, can you, in a little vein in the feet, in the food, and then he had the possibility to continue with his euthanasia.
The most important reason for requesting euthanasia is fear. We estimate that of the people who ask for euthanasia, from 80 to 90 percent are scared of something, scared of suffering because of pain, scared of suffocating, sometimes scared of unbelievable things, things that could never happen in the course of their illness. There are nearly no cases where pain relief could not be achieved. Palliative medicine has developed greatly and become very effective. In fact, statistics show that those who submit to euthanasia do not do so because of pain. Suffering brings also loss of human dignity. And this is mentioned in 80% of all the cases. I have worked with old people for about 20 years, and I have seen many people dying. The number of people asking for euthanasia has increased in recent years. My experience here in this house is that people who came here brought statements with them many times about wanting a euthanasia. But because they received good care, the number of requests for a euthanasia decreased. Instead of uh, killing the suffering, you kill the patients. That shortens fantastically the process of dying and those people will suffer only a short time. But I think that you should kill the, the suffering instead of the patient. And when you see that people who become desperate and who, who say, doctor, do something because I'm suffering too much, you know, that you should do something, anything, but not kill them. We had a lady here with breast cancer that continued to spread. At one point her home doctor came and said, she has a statement requesting a euthanasia. Can you come with me to see her and talk about it? We did. We sat there together, but the lady didn't even mention the subject of the statement. She said, I receive good care here and everything is all right. He decided with his children, you know, it's time for me to go. He was in his bed, you know, in the hospital. Let's have euthanasia. Uh, well, we will schedule that. Or say the children say, let's do it on a, on a Tuesday, on Wednesday, then we have time for the burial and the friends coming for your uh, funeral and things. And he said, okay. When the moment came, he asked the doctor, ask him before giving the injection. Yeah, do you say, doctor, if I can live a bit longer, it would be better. I'll say to the doctor, uh, why did you agree? You have signed all files and things. Yes, because but I wanted to please my children. The family came over from Canada to be here. But he thought about it and said, I don't want it. Not today, not ever. I just don't want it. But pressure was applied. After all, people had come over from Canada, and they won't come a second time. Many old people feel like they have a duty to die, and I think this is one of the most tragic results of our policies here. They feel like they have a duty to die for the sake of their children, uh, the people around them, so that they're not a burden. Uh, it's not nice to look at somebody who's suffering or to visit them. They feel burdened, oh, well, you know, I just need to get myself out of the way. That's tragic. <laughs>